Okay, we're looking at verse number 20 from chapter 2. The body exists only in imagination, as do heaven and hell, bondage, freedom, fear. Are these my concern? I, who am pure awareness, the body exists only in imagination, as do heaven and hell, bondage, freedom, and fear. Are these my concern? I, who am pure awareness. So this verse, we must look at it from the end. The end is what that I, who am pure awareness. So yesterday we discovered, no? we said there are three clues to find the self. What are the three clues to find the self? Find that which is the witness of all phenomena. Find that. And if the answer, if the insight is still phenomenal, then you find out who witnesses even that. So if it is a mental image or a concept of something, you find out who witnesses even that. What is the second clue? What is that which remains unchanging? Because if it is coming and going, then it cannot be the reality that we are looking for. We already have the unchanging seems. The, the changeful seems apparent to us anyway. We already have the changeful. This world, this realm is a realm of change. So we are looking for that stability, of that which is the unchanging. So, first clue, find out that which witnesses all things. The one solitary witness of all there is. Second, that which does not come and go. The sage said, you do not come and go. And third, it must be your direct insight. It must not be something that you have just heard in satsang or read in a book. You must speak then from your direct experience of this. In fact, for most of you, I would say, use the word awareness as little as possible. Because the more we use it in a worldly sort of way, it happened once I got, I rarely get upset with the Sangha. <laughs> but I got a bit upset once when I noticed that you just, everybody is becoming very casual and just making jokes about awareness. Sometimes it's okay. But you know what happens is that all of these words in satsang, they have a certain potency about them. And if you trivialize them, if you make them run off the middle, then they, refu they, they stop being those pointers, those potent pointers that they are. So it is a sacred, sacred word, with a sacred pointing, just like the inquiry. So this. You must be very great, grateful for these pointings. Who am I? Am I aware now? Can I stop being? There comes a time where even all of these become meaningless and irrelevant. So don't be in a rush to proclaim anything yet. Allow them to do the world. I know there are thorns. There are thorns that we are using to remove other thorns. Okay? And ultimately also to be thrown away. But as far as it is helping right now, then don't be in a rush to throw it away, to put it down. Don't become too Advaita too quickly and say, oh, I'm not the doer, so why you ask me to do the inquiry? Inquiry will happen when it has to happen. <laughs> Those words will smell true one day. The same words can smell completely true one day. You see? But they will smell when all idea of doership is dropped away. 
you see this instrument just moving like a wave is moving on the ocean of consciousness and then those words will have a different fragrance then when you say who is here to even do the inquiry i find nothing like this here see they will carry a different perfume they not sound special so are these my concern i who am pure awareness so when we find using these tools we find the self okay. then what is this one concerned about what concern can you have as that awareness so then when a concern comes you are not to pick up an idea of unworthiness or guilt or something See, because hearing these words sometimes we can feel like oh therefore now a concern should not come in fact welcome it when a concern comes welcome it see invite it in and say what is this what is going on i'm concerned about money in the bank don't push it away no no you can't be concerned see welcome i'm concerned about money in the bank can i see who is this i who has this concern so don't treat anything as an obstacle now when you are in satsang everything becomes a tool for your recognition don't come in resistance of anything don't come in some sort of a, we were talking some time earlier don't get into any sort of advaita denial you see because advaita also gives you the best tools for the ego to perpetuate itself through resistance through denial Don't try to brush things away. The sweeping is happening from under your carpet. The sweeping of all the conditions. See, if you continue to push things back under the carpet, then it will seem like this spiritual journey it continues, it perpetuates. So just remain open. Open with a slight welcoming attitude. then when you see that i truly as a self remain unconcerned with anything that might be appearing in this play see? so when the translator or when the anastavakra has used the term imagination it doesn't mean the way we usually understand i'm just imagining it you see? it's not appearing in the physical realm i'm just imagining it he's not saying it like that he's calling this entire process of dynamic manifestation a manifestation of this power of imagery create imagery this power to project appearances so from there we can understand that the body exists only in imagination as do heaven and hell this is bondage freedom fear are these my concern so you see that it is only when this dynamic aspect comes into play that all this manifest worlds manifest emotions manifest thoughts or manifest body that comes into play for awareness it is just an appearance within its own being within its own dynamic aspect i see no differences or separation even the multitudes appear as a single formless desert to what should i cling 
I see no differences or separation. Even the multitudes appear as a single formless desert. To what should I cling? Very beautiful, isn't it? And he has emphasized this yesterday also. Seeing one. What is it? Seeing one, I see many. Actually, we are just seeing one. But we are believing that we are seeing multitudes. So, this is a very, very beautiful discovery. I encourage all of you to just notice how this happens. Take anything. Take anything. And see if you can just see it without empty of concept, empty of judgment. Empty of interpretation. Look at a flower and see how the mind tries to contribute to the scene that it can only make some interpretation, some judgment, some desire. Yes. It's also made up of that scene. Is it? Just like the entire manifestation is also only awareness. See, just like the finger is only the hand always. It is not separate from you see? Now what is the game that consciousness is playing? Consciousness is playing the game that first it decided to pretend as if it is subject to this voice and actually is the is the one that is affected by this manifest creation in some way. And now it's playing the game of seeing that no, it is beyond the voice's limitation. See? So what can happen? is that although the voice is also consciousness, it is recognizing that what the voice is saying about me is not the truth about what I am. Is this part of my own design? Of course it is. Is it made up of consciousness itself? Of course it is. And yet, consciousness contains both aspects. Isn't it? So if there is truth, if there is a voice of truth like intuition, the Sadhguru's words, there is also the opposite of that. If there is a sage, there is also the Murderer, the thief. So, the manifest creation is both. Both aspects are consciousness. And yet, there is something which is pointing us to the, the play of individuality, which is the voice of the mind, and something which is pointing us to the dropping of this individuality, which is the intuitive. Yeah. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. That is why I stress so much on the belief aspect of it, not the attention aspect of it. You see? So, he, very beautiful what he said. He says, even the appearance of this thought construct, energy construct called thought, is part of the one appearance in perception, you see? perceived with attention. There is no separation even in that. You see? But what is this unique power of belief? Which makes it makes the pretense come on as if there is a separate entity here. See? So even that, of course, is part of the play of consciousness itself. But this is the way the play is designed. See? I say often, isn't it, that no shops in the world are selling you individuality. There are some shops, like the satsang shop, which is selling you the idea that you are not. All of this is part of whose play? The same divine. So the design of this play. Some are designated as alarm clock, and all they have to do is beep. <laughs> you see, they can't help it. Knowing fully well that the waking will happen, and the waking will happen. It is not that there is confusion about, oh, you should wake up. The alarm clock is not worried about that really. Although sometimes it has to pose as a get up, get up. You see, like that. But it knows the waking will happen, and the waking has to happen. My job is to beep. The job of that expression. Seems to become. When, when you said that what is an imagination, I I know that I am this thing, this person is an imagination. But sometimes I don't know it's an imagination. Yes, 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 that's why I wanted to clarify. Good, you asked again, so I can clarify. So. There is this awareness which doesn't have imagery, you see, it's non phenomenal. You see? So, when the, that's why I said when the author or the translator uses the word imagination, what is implying is not what we usually call imagination. 
Like we say, person is an imagined entity. Does not even have a phenomenal existence. I call the person the second level illusion. You see, so you, whether you believe this phenomenal existence to be illusory or not, you you will admit that like you are doing to say that this person I cannot find. You see, but the appearance of this body is undeniable as an appearance. You see, so what the what Ashtavakra is saying or what the translator is using the word imagination to mean that. Aspect of itself, which create projects all this imagery, all this world of appearances, is, it? is not the way we usually use the word imagination. We are just imagining that there's a you know, blue cat sitting there. It's not like that. It is apparent in this world of appearances that the body is there. Is That's why the distinction between reality and appearance I made, which is that the definition of reality. The case when we are studying like this is it is unchanging. So then you find that everything in the world is an appearance because we cannot find anything which is unchanging. At least in that definition, it is an appearance, isn't it? So just keep it at that because otherwise, what will happen is we'll try to see this apparent world as if it is imagination or something, and then that will become another trip. <laughs> we don't, we don't need to go. Just, know, just see that the the way the word imagination is used is just to convey that the dynamic aspect, the imagery, phenomenal aspect, see, which includes the body, all the feelings, all our emotions, thoughts, everything. Okay. The, all the all the content of perception is is imagery, the play of this light and sound. See? See, uh, So, so we'll go very slowly. When we search for this witness, that witness is all phenomenal. We find that it itself is not phenomenal. You have to tell me that is clear. So this witness, this witnessing awareness, whatever you call it, itself is not phenomenal. Therefore, there is no imagery involved with that. You cannot imagine awareness. See, if you imagine awareness, you have to look for who witnesses even that imagination. See? Just like if I tell you, just think about nothing. See? And this nothing has no color, no shape, no size. See? At best, your mind will give you some blank, black colored space, but not even black it is. See? Not even transparent it is. You cannot imagine. See? So, this awareness, is it like that? Or does it have some attribute, some quality? So you find that it has no quality. It is quality less, no image can be made out of it. Is it? Then, all that is, is the image, what is that? Like the body has an image, our thoughts have an image, imagination has an image, memory has an image. Sensations have an image. See? All of this has an image. So, what is that? Yes, it is phenomena. So, where does it come from? So, that is the broader definition of mind, which is that it is the big mind or consciousness itself. When I am, we call that the waking state. Then, all this play of all this imagery comes. See? But I as the self remain imageless, isn't it? See? So when he is saying now that all of this is imagination, he's talking about that kind of projection of imagery. He's not talking about that imagination which is part of the imagery. Not to get into any of those uh, denials, we are only saying that from the relation to that which is the self, which is non phenomenal, from the perspective of that self which I am, all of this is the play of imagery, the play of light and sound. Time and space. Very good to clarify because oftentimes we hear this and then we try to 
you know, this, we come into some sort of a denial of the appearance of this world. No, the appearance is appearing. We, we, no further denial is needed. Just to call it appearance is enough. Appearance means what? That which comes and goes. Therefore, it is not the fundamental reality that which is unchanging. I see no differences or separation. Even the multitudes appear as a single formless desert. To what should I cling? So, what the sage is saying is that there is nothing to cling in this world because I am beyond this phenomenal creation. I do not exist in this realm as if I am an object. See, but as long as, that's why I said it's a cheat code. As long as there can be still this belief that I am an object in this world and for those who have been blessed with at least a little bit of devotional temperament, they have the cheat code that they can hang on to the master. Master means what? Your own divine presence. And it is okay if you if you are blessed with the beautiful physical embodiment of this divine presence as all of us are blessed with the presence of Guruji. I am not the body. I do not have a body. I am awareness, not a person. My thirst for life bound me to a seeming of life very potent words. I am not the body. I do not have a body. I am awareness, not a person. My thirst for life bound me to a seeming of life. The first part, I am not the body. In fact, not so many believe this. Although we have a belief that everyone believes that they are the body, if you really examine it, you will find that mostly it is the second part, that I have a body. You know, you report about the body, you report like this, isn't it? That my body is very, very, or only when this body goes away, I will find some rest. Like we say, rest in peace. The body is gone, now I'll be able, be able to finally rest. What does that convey? That we already see, most of us already see ourselves to be beyond the body. But we still feel like, oh, I have this body, I am an entity, person, which is the owner of this body. Now that entity is investigated and we find that there actually there is no such entity here. There is only God. It is not a limited entity. It is the unbound, the divine presence. It is this being itself, which is the owner of all things, not just this body. The voice of separation convinces us that this is your container, you have this container and this defines your limitation in some way. Most of us have this idea that I am an entity sitting inside this head or something like that. Then you start to see that no, this does not contain me. I contain it. I contain it as I contain everything. So these become our insights. So, so this is what it means. It does not mean that uh, there is no body, if there is no appearance of the body or something like that. Of course it is appearing, but it is not this ident there is no identified personal entity who can say this is my body. It works in collaboration in some way with perception, but it also continues to be an object of perception. So then you see that it is because it is an object of perception, both in the visual way as well as the sensational way of the sensation of the body, the boundary of the body. That is why the mind has something to say that this defines your boundary. This is what you are. And that is what conditioning stems from, you see, with our parents, with our mind. It is like this. You are that move your hand, go here, walk here, or oh, you fell down. All of these things have been picked up 
that's very the root condition. And then building on top of this all the others, and with this and handsome and this and that, and all the then based on that we have a husband and wife and all of this is built on. If we if we see that uh, this is just a visual perception and there is a sensational perception, all of that is experience in which container the container of my existence, see, which also contains the visual which is seemingly coming at a sense of space. But where is that space contained also within the same? See? The time and space are also experienced within what space? Unless you exist, is there an existence of time or space from your inside your PC? If you speak from an inference, then you'll say, of course, while well, I'm sleeping, the world just continues and I do. But from your experience, if you see, from your insight, if you see, that right now these words, although they might be seeming to come from outside of you, they are just contained within you. That space of existence, that being, that consciousness. Then we see that, then we see that the true meaning of Advaita is not this idea that, oh, we are one because, you see, uh, because of some some reason, because we all experience the same pains and frustrations, we are not one because of that. We are literally one. <laughs> it is not based on an inference of something. That because this is this, this. without an inference, we are one. Without the because already, we are one. And that is our experience also. Yes, you see, and that is our experience. But we have been taught. <coughs> By this mind and through conditioning seemingly coming from the world, that it is not that way, that you are something limited within this boundary and everything else is outside of you, therefore it is not you. In the limitless ocean of myself, the winds of the mind boil the myriad waves of the world somewhat what, what we are saying. But when the wind subsides in the limitless ocean, the arc of personhood is swallowed up along with the universe it carries. In the limitless ocean of myself, the winds of the mind boil the myriad waves of the world. But when the wind subsides in the limitless ocean, the arc of personhood is swallowed up along with the universe. And what we personhood means the boundary dissolves. You don't make this distinction that I am this. If you don't have a distinction of your limitation, it defines you in some way, then you will find that the worship dissolves. I am shaking my head over there. This says this one, I am shaking my hands over there. <laughs> This very naturally, don't even be in a rush to infer like that or to transfer it. In your seeing, it is that. See? Once you just do the simple seeing that the boundaries that I experience of sensation do not contain me, it is I which contain them. And the I which contains them, where does it stop? Then you'll see that automatically you see that it doesn't stop, it is beyond. So then you're not so so tightly uh, attached to this body and what is happening. It is allowed, it's given more space to physically. I is not physically here in the sense only the only phenomenal representation of I is I am. Then all of that is just a, just a play of light in, on that screen of an air. There is no that's why I say that your position is not in this universe. I'm pointing you to that which is beyond time and space, which is yourself. The position of time and space is within you within your being and and these are not the point things that you should inquire into you just keep inquiring into who am i 
and all of these will become your fun insights but sometimes it's good to share these also because sometimes very sticky things are there like this what contained in the body can be a very sticky thing and we can keep inquiring and even at the end of the inquiry we might come to the conclusion yes there is awareness contained within this body really the mind takes hold of our recognition and paints it in this way and so i have to sometimes shake you out of this idea really, that you are contained in this body or in this universe really? so, why because the question i face many times is yes i find that i am awareness but how do i know that she is awareness <laughs> so that is like missing the point in some way because you got a mental interpretation of the recognition so i was just getting there okay Can that sometimes, where it doesn't feel like it is one, can that happen without any concept? She's yeah, when it feels like she's not one, actually she was one till she said those words, and after no. she said. <laughs> 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 no. No, no. Anyway, whatever the trigger might be. Yes, like anything. Sometimes yeah. it is nothing. But is it possible without having a concept? Do we need uh, a concept to get to our oneness, or do we need concept to presume a two-ness? Like this moment, I feel that I am so blank. Yes. Like everything, all the experiences have been dropped. and i have no understand okay very good and i have i'm not putting on to anything that okay this is how i am yes so now everything feels new yes. now when you're seeing it it feels like how <laughs> how is it happening how could it ever happen how did this happen how do i even express it that we are one how do i even see it you don't have to Express it at all. These uh, these discoveries which you are making, you will find that mostly there is no template, but mostly these you will not find so easy to share because your discovery is that of something which is beyond this phenomenal realm, and words are designed to describe phenomenal things. It is only after Great marination in this discovery that some will have this energy or even inclination to open their mouth and say words about it. Most who come to the discovery of the self just hardly ever speak about it actually because it is so indescribable. So you never know how it plays out. Who, which expression are the words given? Which expression are not given? It's all part of the play of consciousness. So these words will not come from any intent that I intend to explain to somebody else what my discovery is. You will find yourself again and again at a loss. <laughs> and you try to explain to your friends, family, and those you care about what is happening with you. You try to, and they're like. <laughs> so you notice that this in your presence, I don't even have this expectation, but some might start to experience something differently, and that is enough. If you try to explain it with some intention that uh, so I must clarify to them, because uh, you find yourself running out of words, being so inarticulate. <laughs> In the limitless ocean of myself, thank you very much. And how wonderful it is, the limitless ocean of myself. Waves of beings arise, collide, play for a time, then disappear, as is their nature. 
how wonderful it is. In the limitless ocean of myself, waves of beings arise, collide, play for a time, then disappear, as is their nature. So then when we start to just witness all of this play, it's so beautiful this place. So that's chapter two.